The Nauvoo Expositor was a newspaper in Nauvoo, Illinois, that published only one four-page issue on June 7, 1844. This newspaper issue criticized Mormon prophet Joseph Smith and the leaders of the LDS Church. Only 1,000 issues were printed before the printing press was illegally destroyed by Joseph Smith and the city council, all of whom were Mormon church members. The Expositor was founded by several men who had seceded from the church due to illegal and immoral practices, perpetrated by Mormon prophet Joseph Smith and other church leaders. The seven publishers of the Expositor newspaper were William Law, Joseph Smith's second counselor in the first presidency of the church, Wilson Law, William's brother and brigadier general of the Nauvoo Legion, Charles Ivins, a Mormon bishop, Francis Higby, church member and colonel of the Nauvoo Legion, Chauncey Higby, brother of Francis Higby, church member and aide-de-camp to Major General John C. Bennett, of the Nauvoo Legion, Robert Foster, church member ordained to an elder, Charles Foster, Robert's brother and church member. The publisher's goal was to publicly disclose the doctrines and practices of the church and also to bring to light the illegal and immoral practices of Joseph Smith and other church leaders. Some of the main points the publishers wanted to make public were the practices of plural marriage, and also that women are converted from other countries and encouraged to travel to join the church, where they are told Joseph Smith will meet with them and reveal the mysteries of heaven to their full understanding. They meet with Joseph and some of the apostles in a room labeled No Admittance, where they are told instead that they will be Joseph's spiritual wives. Despite their shock upon hearing this, the prophet Joseph damns her if she rejects. Having traveled thousands of miles to join the church and believing in the prophet, they must accept. Joseph Smith established an inquisition, similar to the Spanish Inquisition, with the purpose to extirpate heretics. The tribunal and councils of the church will not permit the accused to stand in its midst and plead their own cause, so that the atrocity of the church crimes will not be exposed to the public, contrary to the law of the land that condemns no man until he is heard. Money collected from church members is not used in the way the members expected, but is used by the leaders of the church to buy land and to sell it to newly arriving members for tenfold the price. Joseph Smith is not a king. Joseph Smith wants to put down all governments and the one established on its ruins. Joseph Smith's attempt at political power and influence is preposterous and absurd. Joseph Smith is above the law and has committed perjury and will not suffer criminals to be brought to justice. Calls for repeal of the Nauvoo Charter the publishers had petitioned Joseph Smith for reform in the church without a public exposition of the enormities of crimes practiced by its leaders, but were treated with contempt, particularly by Joseph who would state that if he had sinned and was guilty of the charges we charge him with, he would not make acknowledgment, but would rather be damned, for it would detract from his dignity and would consequently ruin and prove the overthrow of the church. The Nauvoo City Council included the city mayor and prophet Joseph Smith which combined the legislative and judicial bodies of the city government into one body, making it a theocracy with the prophet Joseph Smith at the head. The council declared the expositor to be a nuisance according to the Nauvoo Ordinance concerning libels. Although this ordinance stated that every citizen had the right to free speech, and if charged with libel or slander, every citizen has the right to trial by jury, Joseph Smith and the city council deemed the newspaper to be a public nuisance without hearing the testimonies of the publishers. Smith ordered the town marshal to destroy the printing press. He said, the council passed an ordinance declaring the Nauvoo Expositor a nuisance, and also issued an order to me to abate the said nuisance. I immediately ordered the marshal to destroy it without delay. The First Amendment of the United States Constitution protecting the freedom of the press and the freedom of speech was not enforced at a state level until 1931. However, Illinois had its own state constitution adopted in 1818, which guaranteed the right of freedom of the press and freedom of speech. It read, The printing presses shall be free to every person who undertakes to examine the proceedings of the General Assembly or of any branch of government, and no law shall ever be made to restrain the right thereof. The free communication of thoughts and opinions is one of the invaluable rights of man, and every citizen may freely speak, write, and print on any subject, being responsible for the abuse of that liberty. In prosecutions for the publication of papers investigating the official conduct of officers, or of men acting in a public capacity, or where the matter published is proper for public information, the truth thereof may be given in evidence. And in all indictments for libels, the jury shall have the right of determining both, the law and the fact, under the direction of the court as in other cases. The Illinois State Constitution made the destruction of the Nauvoo printing press illegal, and stated that cases of libel should be handled by jury to determine the law, and also the facts. The sheriff of Nauvoo was sent to collect all copies with a Mormon mob following him. These actions started a chain of events that led to the deaths of Joseph and Hiram Smith 20 days later. After the printing press was destroyed, Smith illegally declared martial law as mayor of Nauvoo. He and his brother Hiram were arrested on charges of inciting a riot and treason, a capital crime. The Smith brothers were killed while in jail awaiting trial.